Hi, and welcome back. I got into an argument with someone on Reddit. I know, right? Hold the front page. I mention it for two reasons. First of all, a public apology for suggesting my interlocutor was advocating undithered 24-bit files for mastering. I misread the post and didn't see that they were actually recommending 32 float, which is fine, of course. I'm not naming them, however, as they were still dead wrong in their other assertion that 24-bit dither noise being added prior to mastering is a problem that should be avoided. I mean, let's get some perspective, first of all. I'm old enough to remember when 16-bit DAT tape was the standard way to print your mix, and that was fine. Well, it wasn't really. DAT was a pretty flaky and unreliable format, but when it worked properly, it was fine. No one ever complained about the noise floor. It was so low, we didn't even know it was there. So let's agree that in a practical sense, even 16-bit dither noise is not a problem, in the same way that printing 24 bits without dither isn't really either. Of course, I'm not advocating that you return to printing mixes at 16 bits. The benefits of the extra 8 bits are essentially free. We might as well use them. Although I do think that extra dynamic range is much more useful at the tracking stage, where it gives you the freedom to leave more headroom and makes your life much easier. When you're printing a mix and the dynamics are a known quantity, it's easy to use all the bits. And honestly, 16 is plenty for most pop music, which doesn't have much dynamic range anyway. But it poses the question, how many times would you have to add 24-bit dither before it became a problem? But of course, that's a silly question, because what constitutes a problem is subjective. So instead, let's ask the question, how many times would we have to add 24-bit dither to increase the noise floor by the same amount as 16-bit dither? Let's find out. Here's a blank Reaper project with a region selected for rendering. Let's bounce that out with 16-bit dither and noise shaping and re-import it back into the project. Now I'm going to mute that and do the same again, this time with 24 bits. Let's compare the levels for those two files. I'm expecting the 24-bit file to be about 48 dB quieter than the 16-bit file, 6 dB per bit. And yes, that checks out. Dither is random, so I wasn't expecting exactly those numbers, but actually we're pretty close. If you're wondering why the integrated loudness is minus infinity, by the way, I think that's because the algorithm incorporates a gate to ignore silent passages. Anyway, let's mute the 16-bit file and bounce the 24-bit dither through another layer of 24-bit dither. And now let's compare the stats again. It seems we've gone up by about 3 dB, approximately. I guess it's going to take a few passes. Let's try two more. Each time I'm leaving only the most recent render unmuted and adding one more pass of dither noise. OK, four passes seems to be roughly 6 dB louder than one pass. Maybe we need eight. Well, eight passes is roughly 9 dB louder than one pass. I think it's time for some theory. I'll be honest, I never intended to make up the full 48 dB difference in this way. It would be a long and boring video if I did. This was just to check if my expectations were correct. Dither noise is random, right? So two different passes of dither noise should be uncorrelated, and I would expect them to increase in level by roughly 3 dB when added together. The next 3 dB of increase would require adding two passes of noise to another two passes of noise, so four lots of dither. Adding another 3 dB would mean doubling the number of passes again, so 8 passes to get 9 dB louder. This is one of those chessboard, grains of rice, exponential growth scenarios. I've gone far enough with my tests to feel confident my maths checks out, so let's work it out with a calculator. 48 dB divided by 3 dB is 16, so we need 2 to the power 16, which gives us 65,536. If someone who skipped fewer math lessons than I did wants to check those numbers, I'd be very grateful. But I'm reasonably confident this is correct. So you need to bounce your song with 24-bit dither 65,536 times before it becomes as unusably bad as 16-bit dat, which was the professional standard for most of the 90s. Are you still worrying about it? Now, as a mix engineer, it is absolutely valid to think... Well, the noise isn't a problem, but I don't need it if I print 32 float, and I don't care about the file size, so let's just do that. This is fine, no argument whatsoever. But if you're a mastering engineer, I do think it's subjectively wrong to tell your client to worry about noise at minus 120 dBFS. 
They need to focus on things that actually matter, like finishing the mix. Honestly, it doesn't even really matter if they print 24-bit without dither. That's still better than 16 bits, which, as we already established, is basically fine also. But there was another questionable statement from a different poster in the same thread. If you're creating a 16-bit file, it's better to do that directly from a 32-bit master than to dither to 24 bits first, and then dither that down to 16 bits. And that's kind of silly when you think about it. When you go to 16 bits, you're adding 65,000 times as much noise as you did when you went to 24 bits. Do you really think that 24-bit dither will make any meaningful difference to the 16-bit file? There is, however, quite a good reason to create your 16-bit files from the 24-bit versions. Granted, this doesn't apply if you're mastering your own productions, but if you're mastering for clients, quality control is an important part of the job. You can't assume that the client will double-check everything, so I work under the assumption that if I don't catch errors, the errors get released, and I don't ever deliver files without QCing them first. And QCing them properly really means listening to them all the way through with a reasonable degree of attention, not just playing them in the background while arguing on Reddit. Now consider that you're mastering an album and delivering files at multiple different sample rates, and maybe factor in a couple of revisions as well. That time you spend QCing the files will quickly add up. But you really don't want to skip it, because Sod's Law dictates that one time a plugin falls over mid-render and drops a massive click in the middle of a quiet, exposed passage, that's going to be the file that no one checks before release, and you'll have egg all over your face. And frankly, even if the client catches it before release, that's still extremely embarrassing. So anyway, if you know that your 16-bit files were created from your 24-bit files, that means you don't have to QC the 24-bit files. If the 16-bit files are clean, the 24-bit versions must be also good to go. And that can actually be a big time saver. Anyway, that advice you often see to only dither once should actually be only dither to 16-bit once. You don't need to worry about 24-bit dither. And I have said this before, but I've got a bad habit of burying important information in the middle of a plug-in review or something, so I figured it made sense to dedicate a video to it. Okay, so this video was marginally higher effort than the last one. I'll keep ramping it up gradually. Hopefully I can get back to normal soon. Thanks for sticking with me, and for all the messages of support, and thanks for watching.